is this visible to everybody? Yes, sir. This is what you are seeing is the specimen of Damask. What I have shown is an anterior view and it is in your view. This is the upper, upper. this is the superior surface, this is the inferior surface, this is the right side and this is the left side as per you. Okay, generally it comes with a long portion of around 15 marks. So you have to describe everything. Right from the beginning, the introduction that is stomach. What is stomach? It is the most dilated, the most distinctible portion of the GI and it is a part of the foregut, which is meant for the churning movements and mixing. And of course, the digestion is also initiated here. The digestion of all monomers, including the carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. So, one function, of course, is the digestion because there is a lot of acid there, HCl, so it also is mixing and like you know mixing and making the food in the form of time or so mixing of food keeping it there because it stays there on a lot of time i mean you know like around two hours 30 minutes or roughly around three hours that is the time when this food stays there and that's called the gastric emptying time because it's a part of foregut it will be perfused by which artery that's the artery providing blood to all the structures derived from the foregut then about uh, like uh, its location, where will you find the stomach? Actually much of the stomach is enclosed within the thoracic cavity What it appears from outside because you know there is a coastal margin here So much of the portion of the stomach goes inside underneath to the left room of the diaphragm So it occupies this epigastric region Part of it is also in the umbilical and most of it is in the left hypocondrial yeah, region. So where actually it lies on the surface, you can tell that these are the regions. But if you take a transfer section, right, from which transfer section you will start visualizing the stomach. If you start taking CD scan sections from above, right, so which section will you find the stomach first? D9. At the level of? D9. 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 D10, you know, is the muscular opening for the diaphragm. And from there, esophageal passes down, and this cardioesophageal junction lies at the level of T11. So at that level, you find the fundus of the stomach. From T11 sections, you find stomach there. Then you take further cross sections down below. You will also come to visualize seeing a trunk. At what level? At the lower border of T12. T12. You further take transverse sections, then. Pylorus you find at the level of lower L1. Lower water L1. L1. So it extends between you can say lower water of T10 and lower water of L1 in beach mesh kamakka. This was the vertical extent. That was about the location. Then about the capacity. Capacity. What will be the capacity? Capacity. Like in a neonate or a newborn. In a newborn, it is about 30 meters. 30 ml is how much, I mean, in a regular life, if you, you know, correlate it, so just remember, fruity spoon is of 5 ml. So around 6 spoons is the capacity of stomach of a newborn. That's why regular and repeated breastfeeding is required for the early few months of life because the capacity is very less. Then gradually, of course, the size of the stomach increases and around uh, the pubertal age, 12 years life, the size reaches to about one liter. One liter. One liter. One liter. Still, it continues to increase in size, and the adulthood, the size becomes 1.5 liter. 1.5 liter. But it's but, but it can still be more in case of people with a good healthy personality, a body size. Okay, so that was about the size. Uh, yes, length. Length, of course. Length is the jo hai wo longitudinal axis. If you draw a longitudinal axis, that is around 25 centimeters. 25 centimeters is around 10 inches. So, out of this 25 centimeters, remember 15 centimeters occupies the upper portion. The lower portion, including like here, including the pyloric antrum and the pylorus that is around 10 cm the rest of the stomach the fundus and the body that weighs around 15 cm total is 25 cm and that is equal to 10 inches you can still divide this pyloric antrum pyloris into 7.5 and 2.5 what 
सो दैट वॉज अबाउट दिन देन जब डेफिनेशन जब लिखोगे ना लॉन्ग तो स्ट्रक्चर और उसके बाद सारी डिस्क्राइब करोगे पहले बेसिक्स राइट फंक्शन क्या है लोकेशन क्या है ट्रांसफर्स वर्टिकल एक्सटेंट सरफेस लोकेशन देन एन आर्टिकल पोजिशन ऑफ द स्टमक की बात करें तो पहले तो देखें डेवलपमेंटली देर वॉज दिस डी आई टी अट्यूब इट वॉज डायलेटिंग केयर इन बिटवीन सो मैनी डायलेट्स इट डायलेट्स इन एन एंटीरियर पोस्टीरियर डायरेक्शन देर वॉज एन एंटीरियर बॉर्डर एंड अ पोस्टीरियर बॉर्डर एंड द राइट सर्फेस द लेफ्ट सर्फेस ग्रेजुअली विद द एम्ब्रॉनिक डेवलपमेंट स्टेजेस दिस टेक्स अ रोटेशन टूअर्ड द राइट सर्फेस so the anterior border comes to face towards the right, right. side and the posterior border faces towards the left, left side and you know there was it was all covered by mesentery and it's derived from the foregut and you know there is a ventral and a dorsal mesentery both of them is present in case of foregut in midgut and hindgut there is only a dorsal mesentery so in the ventral mesogastrium there was a liver thing developed in between and between stomach and liver the portion of the ventral mesogastrium forming the lesser omentum yes. that was also including the hepatoglutinal ligament that's why the first part of the duodenum is also peritoneal covered structure similarly in the posterior border of the stomach that was in continuation with the dorsal mesogastrium and there was a splinting developed between so that portion between the stomach and spleen forms the gastrointestinal ligament upper portion of this dorsal mesogastrium forms the gastrointestinal ligament and the lower portion the dorsal mesogastrium sags down from the greater to the minor now this is taking this turn and there is also not differential growth not only rotation but also differential what happens in differential growth the anterior border doesn't grows with that pace as much the posterior border so there is a differential growth the posterior border exceeds in growth and the anterior border shrinks or rather it retards growth so what happens is anterior border actually form the lesser covage and lesser curvature is less in length compared to the greater curvature which actually was the posterior border of the stomach during embryonic stages now it comes to lie on the left side so you know this greater curvature is around 5 times in length the length of the lesser curvature then another thing is not only this you know twisting towards the right the anterior border there will also be a tilting here this is stomach if i have taught you like this this is the esophageal end this is the pyloric end it is not only like this it also is tilted tilted how the lower end the pyloric end is lifted above a little bit so it comes to lie in a tilted position one thing this is in a coronal plane this tilting is in a coronal plane then there is also will be a transverse tilting like it will also go like this In the board means the anterior surface is not only anterior; it is actually facing above also. Yes, sir. So the anterior surface is anterior to superior, and the posterior surface is posterior. So it is actually lying. It's not like this in the body. It is like this in the body, right? This is facing upwards and anterior. Got it? Yes. Okay. So that was about the orientation of the stomach. There is one another factor. that why this lesser curvature you know it could have gone in a circular way but it actually gets a little j shaped structure what's the reason here the reason is that here there was a prominent artery a major branch of abdominal artery and that is the celiac duct because of celiac trunk being placed here along the lesser curvature this couldn't further go more in circular that's why it becomes a j shaped curve remember this lesser curvature of the stomach makes it a j shaped arc and the j shaped is because of the indentation formed because of the celiac trunk there we'll talk about relations now